Yeah. And you know when you give money to the Lord, wherever it goes, don't matter. You still get blessed, but you got blessed for it. Right. All right. right. So here we go. What he said. What he said. What he said. That's what he said. He said. That's right. I meant to put up here uh, Faith Build 101. I got to still do that next time. Faith Building 101. I'm so busy in my 303s and 404s and 606s, I can't keep up with all of them. Praise God. Uh, all right, here we go. Would you like your day to be brighter? This is the same start that has been for the other two. Would you like your day to be brighter? How many would like your day to be brighter? Would you like your world, your work, your life uh, to be brighter? Oh, hey. That's ten o'clock when I get up. <laughs> Uh, we have more control over these things than we imagine. Did you know that? A lot of times we say, I hear them say, well, I've got no control over that. I've got no control over it. Well, there's a lot of things I have no control over. That's a fact. But there's a lot of things I do have control over. I can't control what happens to me, but I can control how I respond. Well. That's powerful. I, I, yesterday, yesterday uh, Steve Kara's daughter stepped on my toes so hard and she never even knew it. We were talking, and she said, after being over in Turkey and loading those jets and those bombers, because she was in the Air Force, and she said, looking over there and, and, and so cold in the daytime and hot at night, and the, the wind storms would come upon you and peel the paint right off the car. And she said, there was camel spiders would come right up out of the sand and jump at you and incredibly things. And she said, looking at all those people that were hurting. And she said, she come back over here. And she said, somebody would be arguing and losing their temper over or losing a parking space. <laughs> and she said, and she just come back from all that. And she said, I can't believe it. And I was thinking, first thing I told them when I got there today was, when you get here at 6 o'clock in the morning, you ain't got to fight for a parking space. <laughs> and I think about that little guy. Now, I offered, I offered again that guy three times. You can have his parking space. Once I stood out in the car, he said, no, you take it. <laughs> you can have it. All right, here we go. Calling me at church, but this this ain't got to be an <laughs> Okay, what gets me is when my kids call me at church. I know we have church on Tuesday night. They call me on Tuesday night, and I go, I'll text them sometimes afterwards, or or, or and say, don't you remember it's Tuesday night? And they go, that's right, you have church. I had two kids today, two, talk to me about tonight, and I said three, three, and I said, do y'all forget? We have Tuesday night service. We've been doing it for years now. Tuesday night service. Do y'all forget? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, we have more control these days than imagine. Maybe not the actual situation, but the way we see things and respond. Instead of listening to every random voice daily and responding accordingly, try listening to what God says, then respond versus react. Remember the difference in responding and reacting. If you take penicillin you got, and, you, and, and you're not allergic to it, then whatever you've got is probably going to start going away, and that's called responding. But if you're allergic to it and all of a sudden you start breaking out in a rash, you're reacting to it. Now, God doesn't want us reacting to our situations. He wants us responding. If you see every champion in the Bible, they always responded, and they usually responded in a situation where everybody else was reacting. Think about it. When Gideon was, when Gideon, Gideon was hiding, to, to on the threshing floor, hiding like everybody else was. They were reacting to the Midianites. But God said, I want you to be proactive. I don't want you to be reactive. I want you to respond. I want you to get them to do something. Okay? David, everybody was hiding for four days and four nights hiding. They were reacting. And David responded. He got up proactive and he did something. So if you want God to use you, then you're going to have to quit reacting and start responding. There's a big difference. So, overcoming worry. Now, this really is so simple, and I'm actually, we'll probably be out of here in 10 minutes, give or take 20. 30. Anybody say 40? <laughs> I want to see this. <coughs> now, I've got the scriptures at the bottom, but I, what I've done is, I've done something kind of different. Instead of just quoting the scripture, I've taken the scripture and broke down all the things the scripture says. So you just don't have the scripture. Now I'm putting it in the context where, well, if I was didn't have the scripture, what would I be saying in my own language that would correspond with what that scripture is saying? So at the bottom, there's one, two, three, four, five scriptures.
But up here there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ways of what the scripture is talking about. So watch this. Here we go. Jesus said in his word, and this is the promise, not to worry or have anxiety about anything. Again, you can go right down here and see the scriptures. Nor take any thought or be concerned about the circumstances in my life. Cast my care and concern and worry on the Lord. Refuse to worry or be fearful. Now, that is what God said. He said. That's what he said. What he said. All right. Now, here's how we should respond. Now, I'm going to read it once. Now, after I read it once, I want you to go back. Now, the second time I read it, you want you to say it with me. Our response. I, it, you can, where's Bethany? Who knows? Which, she knows I'm riding down the road, and, and I go, it's time. And she goes, okay. And, and I get out there, and I've got my little scripture list, or my little, my little confessions that I like to say. And I'm getting ready to go to the hospital. I'm getting ready to go in a place where I know I'm going to do some counseling. I'm getting a place where things are going to be uh, uh, rough. I'll start. And so when I get there, my nerves are settled. They're already settled when I get there because I didn't go in reacting I responded as soon as I felt, as soon as I felt that, I responded. Now, to react means I go in there looking backwards, I go in there with my head held down, I go in there, you know. But responding, as soon as I felt that, I get that and start going at it. So I'm responding. So you say, well, how can I respond to things? That's how you can do it. This right here, tonight, tomorrow, you find yourself getting in a position where you feel that in your heart, you pull this out and go to talking. Open your mouth. Okay? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The preached word of God. Well, also, having in your heart's one thing. When it comes out of your mouth. Remember I talked about it Sunday? Before you go talk to somebody and give them a piece of your mind. You, you get by yourself and look in the mirror. Or you get by and talk to a chair in a second. What, what, you, what you say is not going to sound like what you heard in your head. Okay? So here we go. Now, what's Sunday awesome about anger? Yeah. I mean, I have to practice stuff. All, all of us do. You know, anybody who thinks got it together, the reason they, think, the reason they got it together is because you've seen them because they're responding, not reacting. That's it. Okay? So, I'm going to say it first, and y'all going to say it with me next. I put my trust in confidence in God. I put, I put my, my trust, trust in confidence, confidence in God. In God. Can y'all say that again? I put, I put my, my trust, trust and confidence in God. In God. You know right then you just made a declaration that Satan trembled? He trembled when you said that. Because you're saying, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to my God. You know, it's like, uh, uh, I would God, but, I would God, but. You know what we need? A lot of us need a but echo. <laughs> Goat religion. But, yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 but. but. Because you say, I'm not able, get ready. You listen, because this might be coming out, it might come out hard, I don't mean to, I mean, it don't sound hard to me, but it could be hard to some of you, I don't know. When you say, I'm not able, but God, I'm not able, do you know that is a reverse pride? When I say reverse pride, you know what I mean? Or a hidden pride, or a masked pride. Because what you're saying to God is, my problem is bigger and your power to overcome it. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Well, I would, God, but my problem is bigger than you. Really? The one who flung the stars into heaven knows them all by name? There's trillions of them. Knows them all by name. He knows that there's life out there some other place. He knows what's going on. He's got this covered. You know, if you look in the scheme of things, we're, some, we're, not, we're not even, if you put us, if you look at, if you get a back, the, the Hubble telescope backs up and takes a picture, do you know you can't even see us? You can stay out here and wave your hand. <laughs> they ain't gonna see us. They can't even see the planet. They can't even see the solar system. Okay? So think about that. So then, look, secondly, didn't you already feel empowered when you said that? Didn't you feel empowered? Because I guarantee you, I put my trust in God. God. What have you got to say? Oh no, I've got to go in there, and I know it's not going to be good. Oh God, let me die. How do you feel when you say that? 
to feed him. But you walk in and go, you know what? I put my trust and confidence in God. All of a sudden now, instead of being Saul saying Goliath's too big to fight, you're David saying he's too big to miss. Okay? Next, I know God will take care of me because he loves me. I know, I know God, God will, will take, take care, care of me because, because he loves me. Woo! I'm telling you, don't you even feel even stronger? Doesn't it make you feel better? I mean, the minute you're not jumping up shouting, if y'all run around and shout, I'll run with you. Amen. I just, get, I just look, you better be going fast I'll run over you. Ready? Number three. I thank God for his presence and peace in my life. I thank, I thank God, God for his presence and peace in my life. life. How can you tell when God's presence is in the room? Because you feel his peace. Because two or three of us together together. That's right. That's right. You go ahead, Steve, with your bad self. We know he's in. That's right. There you go, Steve. But you talked about that running a while ago. You better run fast. If y'all run too fast, y'all better watch out. Y'all be running up my backside. I don't know what it's going to be to put a <laughs> okay, y'all start running get in front of Steve. <laughs> yeah, stay in front of him, but you'll laugh, you'll laugh if I have to run. Sure. <laughs> All right. Next, I refuse. No, here it goes. This is a hard one. I just said it's a hard one, so I've already got you thinking. I've already put a negative twist on it. I refuse to let my heart be troubled or afraid, but keep my focus on him. But I will, I meant I will, but I will keep my focus on him. Ready? I refuse to let my heart be troubled or afraid, but keep my focus on him. If I keep my, if I keep my focus on the situation, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on the water. As soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he sank. The circumstances had not changed. That circumstances had not changed. What changed? Peter's focus. Simon Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and put his eyes on the storm. The storm was still going on. Some of y'all here right now, the storm's not going to stop because you get your eyes on Jesus, although you're going to feel like it has because you got a raincoat, you got an umbrella. You know, how about to put that off? Uh, what's that stuff called on the windshield? Rainex. Rainex. When I first moved to Benson, I was on I-95 and I-40 every day. And you get going there and it gets raining and the big trucks go past you. And they would throw mud, not just rain, mud. And cars would throw mud up on your windshield. And it scared me to death the first couple of weeks I was there because you couldn't see anything. And so that's when Rainex was just really getting popular. Somebody got me some Rainex. And it was harder to apply than it is now. And so I went out there and I put it on my windshield because it would rain hard, especially in that area. Every, every, every other night we had a thunderstorm. So uh, I'm going along and I put that rain next on my windshield. And I'm going right along and I'm flying. And I honestly didn't realize cars were slowing down. You know, someone pulled over on the side and I'm still just getting with it. And you know what? I didn't realize how bad the rain was because the rain X was in the way. And I didn't even have my windsharpers on. Didn't even have my windsharpers on. And those people got their windsharpers on and pulling them on the side of the road. And I'm just, whew. It works pretty good on a ball head, too. Uh, yeah. And it's like a fountain power boats. Fountain power boats have those cutouts in them. Those cutouts are there to, to actually lift the boat up and have less, less friction against the boat when it's going through the water. And it, each one will pick it up 10 plus miles an hour. Okay? So if you got a, a 35 with a... Uh, just a regular engine, and it's got one cutout in it, a 35 Lightning, it'll go about 85, 90 miles an hour. You get two cutouts, without the cutouts, it'll probably go about 70. With that first cutout, it'll go about 85 miles an hour. With the second cutout, it'll go over 100 miles an hour. It, it's because that's how much body was taken out of the water. It didn't change the dynamics of the motor, it changed the dynamics of the friction. All right? Now, I was talking to some, some, there were a lot of professionals coming in, there were professional fishermen and professional uh, racers. And I had some professional fishers come in, and they said they had a, a 38 fountain fishing boat, had two cutouts. It also makes the boat run smoother. And so uh, I remember going 109 miles an hour in a 42 outlaw boat, 
And the reason the outlaw boat is because it's inhabitable down below, but the top is all racing. So it's kind of like a on off road. So I'm in the outlaw boat going 109 miles an hour, and it would not have blown the coffee out of my cup. It would not have shaken the coffee out of my cup. 109 miles an hour. And while we were going 109, Jeff Harris went past us with a canopy going 150. He made us like we were sitting still. 109. Can you imagine going 109 and all of a sudden, <laughs> Okay. What I was going to say is, though, those fishermen told me, said, we were at a fishing tournament a couple weeks ago, and while we were there, the clouds were in the sky, and it was looking kind of rough, and so we go out fishing. We go, when it was sort of started at like 10 o'clock, and we were out there at 10 o'clock, or whatever time it was, 7 o'clock, and it says, so we're out there, and we're pulled way on out, and we're fishing. We notice there's no boats around us. And so we called and said, what's going on? And said, we canceled it for today. And they said, why? He said, because the water was so rough, we couldn't get out there. And he said, water's rough. He was in that fountain. And then we cut through that water like nobody's business. And so he said, I didn't even notice anything going on other than rain. And these other guys were probably going, <laughs> you know, same way, when you got Jesus with you. It's amazing. I can, when I do funerals, I do a lot of funerals, I can tell just as good when I'm working with a bunch of Christians, I'm working with people that have, have flip-flop faith or people that have no faith. I can tell just as good. I can tell it. It's almost like it is. It's night and day. Because people, they're still hurting. They're still crying. There's still a lot of, 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 of anguish. But they handle it differently. Totally differently. And, and it's because Jesus is like that rain is. When these things are coming at you, he helps you. So, I refuse to let my heart be troubled or afraid. I'm going to keep my focus on him. All right?